want to create software, you should be obsessed with Microsoft Excel, the seed for a huge chunk of today's modern day SaaS products like Salesforce, QuickBooks, and Tableau. Excel is like the city of New York. Those who love it also hate it, and it seeps into your bones in a way that you will never fully let go of. It also generates an enormous amount of GDP, productivity, and creativity. It's ugly and it's frequently broken, but out of that mess, true beauty is born on a regular basis. Wow, that analogy went a lot farther than I thought it would. <sighs> but maybe unlike New York, the reasons for Excel's success can be copied and used by any person who understands them. Most of the points in this video are based on this excellent article called Excel Never Dies by Packy McCormick. Let this serve as a review of the article, plus some context at the end about how this fits into software creation today. So the name no code has been trendy lately, and I made a whole video on why I think that's actually a terrible term, but uh, it is technically accurate and Excel is definitely the first no code app. You may not know that Bill Gates and his partner actually launched Excel on the Macintosh computer just because their own computer didn't have a graphical interface. And so to make it work the way they wanted to with a graphical, AKA no code interface, they had to use the Mac. So one of the first points in the article just talks about the enormous success of the classic grid that we all know and how that is so important to Excel's enduring success. The grid is a super convenient way for people to just start writing on a project without having to think about how they're going to structure their data. The grid is just this familiar interface that everyone understands, even if they're using a different program than Excel that uses a grid, they're kind of instantly familiar with it. And that's how you see a lot of the new tools these days, starting with a spreadsheet. That super low barrier to entry let anyone in any profession create their own systems, which ended up turning into software. And really before we had any specific SaaS products, all of the Things that we do now in those products were done in Excel. People used Excel to keep their customer databases. It was where they did all of their invoicing and accounting. And it was even where people analyzed data and then made visual charts. And so all of these systems that people had built on their own and whole industries that had sprouted up then gave way to more purpose-built SaaS products. So for example, QuickBooks for accounting, uh, Salesforce for a CRM and Tableau for data visualization. And those are just the really like high level companies. Just think about how many super niche use cases have then started on a spreadsheet and then turned into um, this very industry specific product. He shows this great graphic made by a guy named Ross Simmons that basically shows you all of the different industries or at least the major industries that have sprouted all of these products uh, from systems that were based in Excel. Excel's great flexibility is also kind of its Achilles heel. There are no rules. It's not a good one source of truth. You're often emailing a bunch of different versions back and forth between coworkers. And likewise, you also don't have a good way to track changes. So understanding both the superpowers and the limitations of Excel, a new suite of applications has cropped up that uh, in the article he calls inspired by Excel, but largely which I would call uh, the no code movement. These tools have a lot of improvements that I think overcome Excel's limitations, like the fact that they're generally cloud-based and have one source of truth. They're also generally more organized and have a better way to track changes over time. But very importantly, they don't try to push the user into creating a certain type of system. My all time favorite examples of this are Notion as a dashboard and a general work management tool and Airtable as a database and a low code app builder. Notion and Airtable both make use of the grid and actually Airtable is really based off of a grid. When you open up a new document, you start there and then you build all of the app functionality on top of that layer of data. And I think this is a good time to remind those people who might be looking at these tools and thinking, oh wow, maybe those people are being creative, but they're creating pretty simple programs. That's how all of these things started in Excel. And so it's pretty cool to think about what came out of 40 years of Excel and now what might come out of these new, better, but still flexible tools. What are all the insanely cool use cases that are gonna come next? Because all of these very industry specific people are now uh, able to create software with better tools. And in keeping with the headline of this video, let's not forget about Microsoft Excel. 
According to the article in 2018, there were 10.7 million JavaScript developers, 7 million Python developers, and 750 million people using Excel on a regular basis. Microsoft also is not sitting on its heels and it's added a lot of really cool tools like Power BI to further the no code potential of Excel. So when I say Excel is the future of programming, I 100% mean that because software is ultimately created to allow someone to do their job better. And the more people who are empowered to figure that out for themselves and figure out how they can use these tools to make their job better, the more innovation, the more creativity, and the more really cool software we'll end up with. If this video inspires you to create something cool, I highly recommend checking out Airtable and Notion. So to learn more, you can subscribe to my channel below and check out all of the tutorials I have on both of these awesome tools.